Watch carefully and we might be able to see the tornado warper in its natural habitat. See that? There it is again. Today we're looking at a build by Captain Garbage. This tornado shot lightning warp abomination is possibly the fastest build we've ever seen in Path of Exile. Welcome to Build of the Week. I'm Evan from Grinding Gear Games. Just a disclaimer before we get started, the version of this build we're demonstrating today is expensive. We're talking multi-mirror territory. Captain Garbage teamed up with Crouching Tuna to take this cool idea towards absolute extreme. So, buyer beware. With that said, it all begins with a very cheap unique. This is Asenath's Mark, a low-level helmet with a big secret. This mod allows you to trigger a socketed spell when you attack with a bow. So, the first step is to put Lightning Warp into our helm. When we attack, we'll teleport. The second step is to speed up Lightning Warp. We can do this by simply getting all the reduced duration we can. Like here, here, and here. Eventually, it's possible to reduce the duration down to zero, so that the teleport is instant. But take a look at this mod again. It has a cooldown, which limits our teleports to only around 3 per second, no matter how fast we attack. But did you know it's possible to lower this cooldown to almost nothing? There's usually only one stat that can do the job. Increased cooldown recovery rate. However, this stat is very rare. Scattered in awkward places on the tree for certain types of skills and on niche items. But there's another solution. Azanath's Mark imposes a cooldown on our Lightning Warp. Since it's a movement skill, we can use a much more abundant stat to reduce that cooldown. Cooldown recovery of movement skills. So, the third step is to stack 204% cooldown recovery of travel skills. Now we're cooking. We'll talk about where we get that number from later. The fourth and final step is our attack speed. Not only do we want a high attack speed, but it also has to be a very specific number. 10.1 attacks per second, to be exact. If this is off, the timing of our teleports and our attacks will be desynchronized and the build will feel awkward. So, to summarize, we're attacking, which triggers Lightning Warp, which has no duration and a tiny cooldown, and we're teleporting where we attacked. Repeat, and we have a true zoomer. So how are we reaching these specific numbers? And what about damage? Well, damage is straightforward enough. You just have to make an insane bow. Just look at this thing. We're also investing in all the usual elemental damage sources a tornado shot build might grab. Captain Garbage notes that crit chance and multiplier is especially important for such builds. Projectile speed is also key to making this work. The projectiles that fling out from Tornado Shot disappear after a certain amount of time. With more projectile speed, they fly further before disappearing, giving us more coverage for clearing packs. Furthermore, faster projectiles means that we're able to actually shoot and clear ahead of us, instead of outpacing our own arrows. If our arrows are too slow, we risk getting annihilated by whatever pack we warp into. Of course, our crazy high attack speed is great for damage too. To name just a few of our attack speed sources, we're using Onslaught, Blood Rage, Frenzy Charges, and high tier mods all over our gear. Like this. And this. Captain Garbage is also using this mod on our boots for action speed. He notes that this mod is especially important. Action speed affects the animation speed of everything our character does. It therefore has a multiplicative effect on our attack speed. By re-rolling this percentage, changing it even just by 1%, we can fine-tune our attack speed to hit that exact number we need. At this high level of build optimization, there's a lot of fiddly details like that. All of them are important to get this build functioning correctly. We won't go into them all here, but one example is our mana costs. It's important that we get our lightning warp cost to zero, otherwise we'll chunk our mana very quickly. Our Tornado Shot mana cost is 1, because we still need to spend some mana to gain Inspiration Charges. Fiddly, but very cool. 
Earlier, I mentioned cooldown recovery of travel skills, and how it's the only way Captain Garbage is making Lightning Warp work. So how on Ray Class are we getting 204% of it? There's a decent amount on the tree right here. We also get a lot from this Watcher's Eye Jewel, but largely we're getting it from the Badge of the Brotherhood. This provides 10% cooldown recovery for every Frenzy Charge, of which we have 8. So, obviously, we're pretty fast. Not getting hit is going to be our main defense. But Rayclast is cruel and surprising. It's still important to have our usual defenses, some life, armor, resists. With our complex tornado warp setup, it's going to be hard to find space for defensive mods on items and the tree. Fortunately, money can solve most problems. This version of the build uses Mage Blood. This pricey belt constantly applies the effects of our four utility flasks, which serve as a good bulk of our defense. Captain Garbage is also using Ancestral Vision. With enough investment in spell suppression and other sources of ailment avoidance, this jewel lets us avoid elemental ailments entirely. There's also a very convenient interaction with Arctic Armor here. The spell creates an icy barrier around us that reduces the damage we take as long as we're standing still. Fortunately for us, teleportation does not count as movement for the purposes of this spell. So, the damage reduction we get from Arctic Armor has almost permanent uptime. While this isn't exactly the tankiest build, it will survive most threats we encounter in passing. And I really do mean in passing. Captain Garbage actually devised this build back in Metamorph. It's been a closely guarded secret as he's improved it over time. Be sure to check out the linked video where Crouching Tuna interviews Captain Garbage about the history of the build and explains it in great detail. They even outline a budget version, which by the way still won't be cheap or easy to make. But the joy of this build speaks for itself. It's powerful, hilarious, and possibly too fast to control. The best way to play is just max out the opacity of your minimap and use the overlay to navigate. When presented with a clear run though, oh boy does this build sing. Since you're going to be the only stable object on the screen, it's important that you look pretty playing this build. Here's the microtransaction setup we used in this video. And that's it for this season of Build of the Week. We've had a blast discovering your creations and putting together these videos. Thanks very much to Captain Garbage, Crouching Tuna, and everyone else making wacky builds for Path of Exile. Stay sane, and see you next time! Yes, I now know how to pronounce attribute correctly. Look at me go.